happy Halloween and welcome to season 21, episode three of BSU Tonight, the only show where we're scary funny. But not like scary funny, like really funny, like scary funny, like I am scared for these people's well-being. Scary funny. For those of you, so no one, who have been asking for an update on my feud with Ball State Dining, I have new intel. The overlords heard about my complaint, heard my complaint about the water cups, and instead of surrendering and fixing the problem, they decided to retaliate. The fruit cups at the student center are listed as 250, but what they don't tell you is that if the lid doesn't go all the way on, they weigh it to decide what to charge you. So do you know what happened last week? I walked up to the cashier with my pineapple in a good mood, but little did I know, my spirit was about to be crushed and my day ruined. I placed my cup on the scale as I was told and then paid six dollars for it. This is not over, Ball State. The next move is mine. Anyways, now that I've vaguely threatened the accredited institution that I attend and could easily get kicked out of at any moment, it's time to move on to the news. The search for the next James Bond is on, and everyone on the internet is buzzing about who it could be. My bet is definitely on one of those average looking white guys that shared a selfie from 2009 with the caption, Twitter, do your thing, when they heard the news. I just know they've got it on lock. In case you haven't heard, there's a lice outbreak at BSU right now, pairing perfectly with the COVID outbreak that we're also in the middle of. All we need now is a gonorrhea surge, and then we'll get the fourth one free! <laughs> Also, the fear of lice is for sure the reason I wore a shower cap to comm class last week. It definitely wasn't because my red hair dye needed to soak in for another 30 minutes, like some of my very rude and loud classmates thought. Nick Cannon said in an interview that he plans to remain celibate until 2022, and many people thought it was arbitrary because that's only two months away. But you know what? I say good on him. He's going to save a lot of money without those extra four kids. Last month, Jerry Seinfeld apologized publicly for the, quote, uncomfortable sexual aspect of the B-movie. Unfortunately, this apology came 14 years and dozens of Vanessa X. Barry Wattpad fanfictions late. Law & Order is returning for its 21st season after being off the air for 12 years, but they haven't responded to any of my dead body audition tapes. So what's even the point? Columbus Day passed a couple weeks ago, but if you're still in the mood to celebrate a genocidal maniac, there's a new Michael Myers movie in theaters, so no worries. And that was your news. This week is a little different because we have a special Halloween short film for you. So we hope you enjoy that, and I'll see you back here at the end. Which is like crazy because obviously Mitzi's best album is like Bury Me in Makeup. No, Lake. no, no. It's Be the Cowboy. Okay. It's. Oh, you know what? Our meeting should have started 10 minutes ago and Tyler's not here. I don't know. He's probably lost. Probably. Everyone, let's go look for Tyler. <laughs> Tyler? <gasps> hey, are you, are you alright, Morgan? <gasps> oh, oh my god. Album is bury me at Makeout Creek. And it, I, you're wrong if you think otherwise. No, it's clearly be the cowboy. No, no, no. This is because uh, of the time that I, I did the physical. Uh huh? Uh. <gasps> Poor Tyler. Who are you calling? Nine one one. Uh, uh, hello. Yes. Uh, Tyler. He, he, he's he's dead. There's this dead body on the floor. Uh, uh, I. I I, I just think this would make a really good skit. Um, can you please send the production team down here what? and maybe like audio camera stat? Like we need to go before the cops come and just ruin this. So please hurry. Okay, everybody stand back. Since Grace and I already called the production team, Bethany, you call 911. We have to film quickly before the police get here. And no one leaves the building until they get here because we're the only ones that are ever here on the weekends. So. So, so that means one of us would have had to have killed Tyler. Hi, I'm at Ball State University and there's a dead guy on the floor. This is gonna be a long night, so everyone get your story straight. I'm sure they're gonna ask about it. Hey, did you see where Grayson went? He said he was meeting up with production and then getting Chick-fil-A. Wait, like at the atrium? Isn't it closed on weekends? I'll figure it out.
Okay, so we need to document this as well as we can. So everyone, one by one, say what you did in the last hour before Tyler died. Okay, I'm gonna sit back here and upload this to Twitch then. I, I still don't understand why. That's my question, like why kill a college freshman? He wouldn't even work as a tax write-off. Are you not seeing this? It's Gavin. His crutch was in Tyler. I mean, he's got a point. I don't know how Gavin's leg healed in the span of an hour. I mean, it's kind of feeling- Shut up, plebeian. Well, you guys are all so blind. It was obviously the newbie. What's her face? Bethany? Me? Why do you think it would be me? Well, it's all so simple. Can you say that again on the camera, please? Yeah. Well, it's all so simple. Tyler and Bethany were reviewing the most recent episode of BSC Tonight. With his new position came a sensation of power. Hey, you know what I think would be super cool? If you just put like a little dragon in there next to Cassidy, I think that'd be so spectacularly. What do I look like, a Marvel CGI artist? Angered by Bethany's negative responses, Tyler ordered her to meet his demands. You will. Put a dragon in there next to Cassidy, okay? And you will. Put it in a jumpsuit from the Squidward Games. Bethany had enough. Cracking her knuckles, she stuck her two fingers up Tyler's nose and breached his cerebral cortex. She jumped a crutch into Tyler's chest, and then this she, she she framed Gavin with the crutch, and that's how Tyler died. You know, I could totally see Bethany's fingers being green destroyers. Mm -hmm. Are you guys serious, Chloe? I think you're forgetting that you are actually the one that killed Tyler. What? Not this time? Well, why do you think it was me though? I can't reach my china cabinet, let alone snap Tyler's neck. Yeah, I think you're too quick to, to accuse the accuser, Bethany. Yeah, you wanna know why? Okay, here's what really happened. I'm just saying that we haven't done a Gary Field sequel, sequel yet. And Wait, were you even here when we did Gary Field? And Chloe and Tyler were, were in the building behind the scenes, talking about what could be written for the next in studio. Amazon sponsorship and get a one-way connection to, uh, you know, Cybertruck samples and stuff. Tyler knew about Chloe's intentional and most recent hit and run, which meant he couldn't leave the building alive. I concern with BSC tonight. Although I could surprise my grandmammy with a sick whip for her 117th birthday. I mean, if I were you, I would replace that car of yours with that human sized dent in the hood. What was that? I mean, that's your car, right? In the parking lot with the blood all over it? I heard about your little run in with Frat Row. I actually got a couple little pictures, actually. Definitely need a new car. While he was distracted and looking at his phone, she tied up the loose ends. <laughs> Chloe struck with allergic fury. Literally. She used her EpiPen to incapacitate Tyler, somehow acting as a sleeping agent straight to his neck. And that's how Chloe killed Tyler. Wait, how did you know I have an EpiPen? Please, you tell anyone who will listen about your peanut allergy, and you're gonna ask me how I know that? Besides the point, it was you. Oh. I mean, I didn't notice a human-sized dent in her car, but I believe that it was her. Facts. I've made a breakthrough. Hey, what are you doing with my book bag? That's besides the point. I have something that may turn the tide of this mystery. A witch's home. That's right. The bane of all living things. Potential theatrical ability and men in tights. I mean, that kind of just sounds like a Friday night to me. Hush your whole crutch boy. We're banishing witches tonight. What does Macbeth have to do with witches? I just think it's a wonderful story. I can see it now. It happened like this. Everyone and their mother knows that Haley Wade is genuinely nice. Frankly, she's genuinely too nice. Nice enough that it's volatile, dangerous. No one dared to look past that surface to gaze upon her true blackened heart. Secretly, she plots the destruction of all high school theater productions, fixating hexes, concocting potions, and writing GTA 5 cheat codes on her left arm. But most importantly, her inspiration, Macbeth. The one book we were all forced to popcorn read in English that made absolutely no sense to anyone except for her. <laughs> Soon we shall bring death and destruction and ruin to all high school theater. Won't we, Macbeth? <laughs> Good morning, Tyler! Uh, top of the morning to you, Hayley! You're doing splendid with that there cable! Oh, 
this blimey thing indubitably. I was in high school theatre, I was. Used chords like these all the time when I was a wee lad. Don't say what. We. Hey, look over there! Using her knowledge of sorcery and maniacal oh, energy of Harley Quinn, she forced Macbeth on Tyler, sucking out and trapping his soul within the text of the accursed book. In conclusion, she's a boss ass witch, and she's also the murderer. Macbeth is obligated. If it was her, it would have been fair pick for 51. L listen, Macbeth proves nothing of me being a witch. But it would be pretty cool if I was one. Oh, yeah? Eat Macbeth, Gavin. Oh, shit, Macbeth. Is this out of batteries? Or. It's a book, you dimwit. You know what? Justin's being suspiciously loud right now. You know what? You're right. I think he did it. He pointed Macbeth right at me. Yeah. I'm already crippled as is. Now I'm emotionally handicapped too. Wait a minute. Justin, is it this yours? What is this doing here? Oh yeah. I'd gotten a couple of these from Uncle John's Jingle Jamboree. What about... What about it? Wait. There's more Uncle John stuff around here. Juice. How can you afford all of this brandy? Let's just say I have a trust fund. My grandpap and I are tied. I've seen your family tree. You don't have a step grandpap or whatever. Come to think of it, we do notice shortages on the days that you're in charge of holding the big cartoony money bag. Oh my god! You're stealing from us! No, I'm not. Yeah? We already don't have the money for institutes or packages. Plus, no one's paying their dues, so we don't have funds in the first place. Oh my god, how could you do this? What are you on about? You know what? Maybe not directly, but Tyler definitely had something to do with your master plan. Let me explain your horrible intentions. Do it. Justin would come into the studio every day, stealing from anyone who'd be in his proximity swiftly and quietly. But that's not all. So we're gonna need some sets, props, and costumes for Uncle John too. Cheaper by the job. Herder, don't sound so disappointed. It's my dream to become Uncle John once again. Look, I didn't write it, Gavin did, and you need to stop controlling and influencing him to write Uncle John stuff. <laughs> Uncle John is life. Do not disgrace his name. Okay, look, there's no need to make things harder than they need to be, Riggs. What does that have to do with Tyler meeting God? I'm getting there, Dingus. And when did you put that hat on? It, it doesn't matter. Anyways, Tyler was a witness to his crazed embezzlement. Oh, hi there. What's all that stuff you got? Uncle John leaves no witnesses. Oh. Tyler was a witness to his crazed embezzlement. To cover up his crime, Justin sent Tyler's soul to the Shadow Realm and used his empty husk of a body as an offering to the ancient cult spirit, Anchomus Jomijus. Isn't it obvious? You couldn't just have that one popular role. You had to capitalize on it. That's how I know you were stealing from us and you killed Tyler. Well, I actually gave him that logo. He needed it to cover up the I'm a C-section baby sticker on his water bottle. <sighs> Darn! We're getting nowhere! Oh! Uh, no, drop it. Uh, nothing. It's nothing. You okay, Cassidy? You seem spazzier than usual. Oh, no, I'm I'm fine. It's just this photo of someone really special to me, and I didn't, I didn't want to lose it. Oh. Oh, Cassidy likes someone! No, don't shut up! You do. Let me see. No! Oh. What the hell? Is that blood? Um, you're one to talk about having blood on someone's hands. Oh, Chloe? Actually, Cassidy, I'm talking about blood on photos, so it's different. Wait, I thought you and Charlie had, like, a falling out. Why do you still have that? Yeah, she live-tweeted it. It seemed like a really messy breakup. Cassidy, you wouldn't. No, no, I wouldn't. You're spot on, just give it back. But maybe you would. Damn it! Here's how it happened. It all started with a tweet. Simple as that. As Cassidy scrolled through her Twitter feed, she had no idea. 
that she was about to fall victim to a thirst trap set by none other than Charlie Cardinal. Things went sour when the flames died down, and even Charlie carrying Cassidy's baby couldn't have quenched the inferno that came and went between them. Tyler had been getting in the way, asking about being a guest on the show, hanging out on weekends. Hey Tyler, you lost buddy? Nah, I'm just looking for tools. Yeah? Well, I happened to notice you stumbled into my boyfriend's DMs, thought surely you must have came in through the wrong door. Oh, you said you're looking for a tool? Seems as though I found one. What are you doing with that? In Cassidy's mind, she did what she had to do. Isn't that right? Oh, nice one, boy boss. Thanks, go boss. No, that doesn't make sense. What do you mean? We're all forgetting that Tyler was impaled by a crutch. Sure, Cassidy can lift, but I don't think she has the experience or strength needed to impale someone with a crutch. But we do know who has experience with a crutch. We all know Gavin got into the world of local collegiate comedy for one thing, clout. And I was like, showrunner, I barely know her. And I was like, showrunner, I barely know her. Good stuff, everybody. See you next week. Bye. <sighs> Peace for the night. <sighs> Man, I love my job and life in general. Wow. Hey, Tyler. Hey, what's up, bud? You, can I help you with anything? Could you help me with something? Absolutely sure. Come to me. Like this? Good. A bit further. <laughs> Good. Like, like this? More. Okay. More. Uh, That's it. Uh, this is good. That's it. Uh, 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 perfect. Good gravy, that's morbid. It's what happened. Sometimes the truth hurts, and it hurts some people more than others. No, it's not. First of all, I wouldn't make a hardly know a joke. I'm an ally. True. Shut up. You speak when spoken to. Look, I'm all for the drama, but I think we're forgetting one certain suspect. Charlie Cardinal himself? Now, for the last time, Charlie Cardinal does not want to associate himself with our, quote, stupid club purrs email he sent to us. I'm talking about the big guns. Morgan. Oh, come on. Why me? Tyler, you have to pay your dues. It's been three weeks. Morgan, all right? I'm an exec now, okay? You can't just talk to me like that, nor can you just shake me down for money, okay? I'm not paying, all right? It's $15 just so you can, what, ransack a party city every weekend? Something? Yeah, sure, what do you need? Oh, that's it? That was shorter than I expected. Well, we're running out of time before the cops get here, so I figure your dead guy on the floor is enough drama for the time. Guys, I know we want to get this solved, but we can't all turn on a group of, for all we know, mostly innocent people. So we should just stay calm knowing someone in here murdered Tyler? I don't really know if I trust you anymore, Bethany. I mean, after all, you got, like, super mad at Tyler for pushing all that work on you. Guys, we really should just listen to Morgan, okay? Oh, come on, Macbeth. You think you can convince anyone that you didn't curse Tyler? You've been acting sus all along. He's right. We're never gonna figure it out if we keep arguing with each other. As I said, I've been listening to everyone's stories, collecting alibis, and there's some missing details that are really standing out. You know what? We, we need some options here to weigh in on. I think Cassidy needs to explain a little bit. Oh, really now? For some reason, she has been having this like weird attraction with Charlie Cardinal and she got mad when Tyler came between them. I honestly also wouldn't know why she'd be attracted to a bird. I mean, I kind of get it, but you've been acting weird since the John episode. A pretty stupid accusation. Hey, guys, okay, so like, I know the EpiPen thing was like an accident, I swear to God, and like the, the spaghetti thing at the Zoli's, it was unforgivable, but I, I apologize and I promise I have too many cat pictures on my phone at any given time to be a killer. Please, I can't go to jail. I can confirm that. <laughs> wow, really smart of you to side with the nice guy. You know what? I bet that crutch of yours has a hidden knife in the bottom. Perfect for stabbing someone who took your half-baked joke, head writer. In fact, 
I bet that freaking knee injury isn't even real either. Full bullies from Sabrina the Teenage Bitch. Yeah, big bitch! Everyone, just stop. I need some space to think about what I've collected. Just... You know, I really you want to I to Oh shoot, sorry guys. I thought I could get this midterm stuff done during the whole murder mystery thing, but I guess we're back now? What should I talk about? Um, we have a guest today. Well, why didn't you tell me sooner? Cassidy, we did tell you. Many times, in fact. Hi. Well, it's, it's really okay. I, I had plenty of time to prepare myself and my stuff and everything while you engulfed yourself in the personal finance exam, right? Is that what you said? You talk when you work. Anyway, so, hi, I'm here to talk to you guys today about my patented system for getting the absolute best Halloween costume. So, you're going to go um, from this, as you can see, there's like four quadrants here, and you're going to go from a range of funny to scary. That was weird. Anyway, so you're going to go from funny to scary, and then recognizable to sexy, and your goal is to be like right here in the middle, and that's going to get you for any Halloween. Who are you? What's going on? Where's my suit? What the hell am I wearing? Where's my mommy? Oh, that's cute. What, you, you're possessed? Because honestly, that's kind of rude to be stepping on my screen time right now. Like, I came here on my own I have no idea who you are. I gotta get out of here. I gotta change into something more intimidating. I, are you okay? Do, do you need me to leave? No, no, you're good. Do I need to leave? Don't be so whiny. More like, do I need to disappear without a trace? <laughs> you know, like trace, like the Spanish, like uno, dos, trace. You didn't set that joke up. Never mind. Tough crowd, I tell you. Jeez. Oh my god. Ew. Okay, I am so glad to be out of that desk, but whoever replaced my good blazer with this Shein nightmare needs to be fired. <sighs> uh, look, look, I really can go. I mean, I just wanted to show you guys the perfect configuration for a Halloween costume and tell your audience about it, and how you can get this board in stores coming very soon, but it's not worth getting poltergeisted over. I'm really, I, I'm, it's not worth it. Are you still talking? God, it's almost like you want me to have four monsters today. Excuse me? You know what? There it is. You always gotta say something back. You know, you remind me of this guy I used to know. He was, like, obsessed with Tom Cruise and, like, hiding in fireplaces or something. What are you talking about? <sighs> oh, oh, oh. I'm free! Oh, my God! I'm free! <laughs> yes! <laughs> uh, no. Nope, nope, nope. I'm out. What? You know what? Yeah. Get out of here, okay? I don't care. I'm just happy to be out of that stupid desk. You know what it's like to be trapped with a inches of dense wood with a bunch of other people who think they're the funniest person on the planet? Not cool, okay? All right, bye. Bye. <laughs> See you later. Check out Cruise Control on YouTube. I wrote it myself and pitched it 43 times. <laughs> All right, you big square of dead tree and plastic. I'm going to wish you, make you wish you never devious like my awesome soul. <gasps> Whoa. Wait. Wait, what is this? Am I back on the set of BSU tonight? <laughs> what kind of body is this? It'll do until I find Kevin Spacey. <gasps> Wait a minute! Damn. <sighs> this kid doesn't have fantasy football on whatever iPhone 6 that was. <sighs> oh my god, am I back on the set of BSU tonight? This is way better than Chicago! Not. Screw this. I'm going back to the bean. Guys, it's Morgan's notebooks of clues. It looks like Justin has been stealing money. 
okay, fine. I may have been taking some money, but it's going towards good cause. I've been putting it towards Uncle John's brand line of air fresheners and clothes. It smells like a damp cowboy hat. What are you going to do, sue me? That's literally what you do when someone embezzles money. Uh, look, you're one to talk. It says right here, possible stalking situation. And I'm pretty sure I saw Cassidy trailing like three feet behind Tyler the other day, and she was dressed like the villain from the Pink Panther. I don't know how he missed her. <laughs> what? Okay, I would never do that, but whoever Morgan did see was definitely going for more of a Bond villain than Pink Panther. Cut the BS. I see that little silky lock of brown hair in that Ziploc bag sticking out of your book bag. Why are you stalking Tyler? Okay, okay. I can't believe I'm telling you guys this, but I think Charlie Cardinal is cheating on me. I mean, he doesn't answer my calls anymore, and the only way I can get a hold of him is by quoting all of his tweets. And even then, the only way he replies is with a gif of him shrugging. And I suspected Tyler was his mistress because I saw a red feather on his back at in-studio rehearsal two Mondays ago. But, so I started collecting evidence. But I didn't kill him, okay? If I did that, Charlie would never forgive me. And I can't risk that red hot dad bod leaving me. Ew, oh my god, Cassidy, I need you to stop talking forever. No, let her finish. Well, if Cassidy didn't kill Tyler, then who did? Chloe's been awfully quiet. What? She did kill a guy with a car that one time. Chloe killed someone? Yeah, I remember reading something about it in the news. It said someone who looked like Angela from The Office hit a guy and fled the scene on foot, even though there were a bunch of witnesses, and she also had her car. All right, I guess I pinky promise not to tell about the guy you hit with your car means nothing anymore, but yes, okay, I did technically kill a guy um, right before coming to Ball State. And I, I understand that makes me like a suspect and someone died. However, right, okay, I couldn't have killed Tyler and Morgan. I don't have a car at my disposal on the inside of a building. I mean, besides, I'm horrible with cover-ups. I'm honestly not sure how you guys all got this far without hearing about my oopsie back in 2018. I posted on my Finsta about it. Oopsie? Something is not adding up here. Okay, well you better whip out your calculator and figure it out fast, cause the cops are coming and they're grading papers. Dear God, this case looks open and shut. <laughs> Officer Piblet, UPD. And I'm the partner, Officer Jack Section. We got a call about a bed rid. A dead kid, Jack. <laughs> that makes sense. I've been watching that Twitch stream you guys have been putting on for the past few hours and around the 50 minute mark, we noticed a note on our dearly departed friend Morgan here. This letter. If our investigation is correct from the Twitch stream, this has exactly who's done it on it. 